Hey guys, Frank here. Welcome to another episode of Digital Classroom. You know, it feels terrible when you lose all your data. Everything you ever shot, all your images of your children, of your mom or your grandma, that nice day at the beach, and one day you wake up and everything is gone. That's something to think about, right? Think about that. If all my work, what I ever did, what I ever shot, everything that I loved is gone. So just make sure that it doesn't happen, right? And luckily the solution is pretty easy. Now, Annewick and I ran a computer company for over 20 years. And one of the things that always struck me, and I'm a really, how do you call it, a person with feelings. I always find it really bad if somebody cries or if somebody experiences something that's really bad. And in the computer company, at least once a week, we had somebody in the company that was in tears because they lost everything. Today, I'm going to give you some tips about how you can prevent data loss. Now, I've been a Synology ambassador for many, many years, but every tip I'm going to give you today is actually also for all the other brands. Now, one of the first things you have to realize is that a proper backup doesn't mean that you have one hard drive in your laptop and you partition that in two parts. Trust me, that happens a lot. That people come in, hey, my hard drive broke down in my laptop, but luckily all my images are on the D drive. Yeah, there's only one hard drive in your laptop in a partition. I'm so very sorry, but you lost everything. Now, this is something that you want to prevent. Now, one of the things that a lot of people do, and especially with smartphones nowadays, is they just keep everything on their smartphone and they trust the cloud backup. That's very smart, of course, but still, if something happens, well, you don't have those images on your smartphone, you have them in the cloud, maybe you don't know your password anymore, maybe you do. But one backup on the cloud, well, how much storage do you need for everything that you ever shot? Do you really need all those images still on your phone? So the first thing I'm going to discuss is what do we do with our phones? Now, both Anaweek and I use iPhones, and as soon, and this also works for Android, by the way. Now, as soon as we enter our home, our smartphones start downloading all the images and videos we took to our Synology NAS. Now, this is already a nice, safe way to back up your system because you don't have to think about it. The moment you come in, it starts back upping, and the moment that you think like, hey, did it back up? You just look on your NAS and you see that everything is backed up nicely. And we use a software package called Synology Photos for that. The nice thing about Synology Photos is that you can also give other people access to your images. For example, your parents. You can do a lot more with that. We, we did some videos about it. I will link those in the description below. But that's only a backup from your smartphone. So now you have it on your smartphone, you have it on the cloud, and you have it on your Synology NAS. Is that enough? Maybe for your smartphone it is. But how about all the work that you do for your company, for your business? Well, this becomes a little bit more complicated. Now, when I look at my photography business, I always use external hard drives in a NAS, in an RAID setup. So what is a RAID setup? Now, when you start out with making backups, most people will just put an external hard drive over USB-C to their laptops and they will make a backup of the internal laptop hard drive. That's a nice way to start. Now you have two backups, one on your hard drive in your laptop and one on an external drive. But you will find out very quickly that that external drive will start to fill up and you don't have any room left. So you buy another one and another one and another one. And before you know it, you have a lot of hard drives spaced out and you don't know where what is and it just doesn't work like, like that, right? And what if you want to copy two terabytes from one hard drive to four terabytes to another? It just takes way too much time. A great solution for this is a so-called RAID solution. Now, a RAID solution means that you put several hard drives together in one housing and they all operate as one big drive. Don't confuse this with a JBOT setup. I'm not going to explain exactly what it is, but with a JBOT setup, if one drive fails, you lose everything. It's the most dumbest thing you can do, so don't ever do that. A RAID system is worked differently. With a RAID system, and most people use RAID 5, you will set up several hard drives, and if one hard drive fails, there's not a real problem. You can just leave your NAS on, take that hard drive out, and put in another hard drive. The NAS will rebuild everything, and you won't even notice it. You will maybe see a slight performance change, but after that, everything works like a charm again. So, 
now it means that you can lose one hard drive and you can still rebuild. So now all your data is safe, right? Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> because also a NAS can break down. It doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. You can also have two drives failed. Or what about upgrading one drive and during the upgrade another drive fails? Yeah, those are horror scenarios you don't want to do. So, it will cost you a little bit of money, but one of the best solutions is to use two NASes. Now with Synology and probably also with other brands, you have a really nice solution for this and that means that you can keep two NASes in total sync with each other. You don't have to do anything about it, you just make sure that those two NASes are on and as soon as you copy something to NAS number one, it will automatically copy that to NAS number two. Now if you are smart, you make sure that one of those systems is for example in your home and the other system is for example at your parents' home or in your studio, at least somewhere else. So is that a 100% full safe solution? Well, we are getting pretty close to that. I would always add one more solution to this. And in our case, we're using SmugMug for this. Now SmugMug has a solution where you can upload as many images as you want. Now I'm not going to upload all my raw files there. So what I'm doing is I'm using one Synology NAS for my video and my photography backup and some documents of course. I'm using the second Synology NAS to copy everything, so that's my mirror. And I'm using SmugMug for all my retouched images. Now those are down converted to JPEG and uploaded to SmugMug. That means that I don't have any TIFFs there or RAW files, but if total disaster struck and two NASs die at the same time, yeah, that will probably never happen, then I can still have access to my JPEGs. There's a little bit of a different reason behind that. If we're traveling, we can access our full library in JPEG from the road. And that's very easy if a client says, hey Frank, I need an image. And I have to tell my client, well, we're not at home yet, but in two weeks I can send you the image. For some customers that works, some customers literally go like, no, I need the image tomorrow. And then it's very easy to have all your images in the cloud. So how do you change your hard drives in your NAS? The first thing you have to realize is that if you upgrade your NAS, you always have to put in a drive that has exactly the same size or is larger. You don't put in drives that are smaller. Now you don't have to turn off your NAS, you can just open it up as you can see here, take out the drive and just put in a new drive. And the only thing you have to do after that is just go into your NAS system and tell it to destroy that drive and start using the drive. Now destroy sounds a little bit weird, but most NASs they actually call that format, but they call it destroy, so you are really sensitive to what you're doing. Now the reason we're using Synology is, as I mentioned before, we have run a computer company for over 20 years. And one of the brands that we had the least problems with and that had the best support was actually Synology. Now is this all? Uh, not really. Now you know probably if you go online and you look at Amazon or your favorite supplier that there are a lot of different kinds of hard drives. So what kind of hard drive do you need in your NAS? Well, you need a drive that is built specifically for NAS usage. So don't go for the fastest drive that is for gaming, that claims 10,000 hours of use and that's amazing and really fast, high cash values. That doesn't really matter. The first thing you have to realize is when you use your NAS for storage, for example for your images, you're never working from your NAS. Your whole data system, or in other words your Lightroom library, should be on a really fast SSD connected straight to your computer. This is how you work really fast, you can, you can use your smart previews, you can even do some editing without the NAS even connected. As soon as you start opening a photo in Photoshop, this is the only time when your NAS is accessed, it opens up that photo in Photoshop and then the speed of the NAS doesn't matter anymore because the photo is in Photoshop. So that means that most NAS drives will be a little bit slower than the normal drives. The reason those drives are important is because those drives are designed to work all day, go down in power, go up again and just run for years and years. But even then, there are some companies that deliver you drives that are especially, especially designed for NAS use. And this is why we made the video today. This is the first time I'm going to install a real Synology drive. This is a drive that is picked by Synology and that's designed for their NAS system. And it means that those drives will have just a little bit of extra security that you can use your NAS for many, many years to come. So we're going to put in a 12 terabyte now and that means that for the next one year, I don't have to upgrade my drives anymore.
Hey guys, if you want to make sure that your data is safe and you don't cry about lost data, don't save money now, but save the money for later. Because the only thing I didn't tell you yet is that if you ever run into problems and you lose data, don't worry yet because there is software and there are companies out there that can do data recovery. Data recovery is incredibly expensive and most of the times you don't get your data back 100%. You will get back weird names. You will get some data back that will be okay, some data that will be well destroyed a little bit, some data that is totally unreadable. So it's not a perfect solution, but at least you can get something back. However, if you calculate the costs for data recovery, the loss and also the time, it's way wiser to just invest in two NAS systems, some hard drives and just start out small with two terabyte hard drives in a four bay NAS, that's more than enough. And then later on you can build your system. Most of those NASs you can also connect to each other, so there's plenty of room to grow. Keep your data safe and make sure that you are not a victim of data loss. I highly recommend Synology drives and of course Synology NASs. I have been using them for many years without any problems. Thank you so very much for watching guys and start backupping right now.